people, and welcome back to part 16 of Thessia, our Australia-inspired build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you all for support last week. You guys very much enjoyed our uh, chill, small town expansion around the town of Benezia, of course, vineyards, uh, growing up here as well. And uh, we did have a great name suggestion uh, from Doodle Plays for the name of the team, which is now the Benezia Bandicoots, of course. Bit of uh, word alliteration and a native animal. So, wonderful name. Thank you so much, Doodle. Really appreciate the support. And today, we're actually going to finish Benezia. Uh, kind of a weird episode today. We're going to do some fun things with vanilla housing to increase our population. And I also want to do something with this beach over here using some inspiration provided by our wonderful Aussie subscribers in the Discord. Uh, on this occasion, Bad Wolf. We're going to be looking at the quite scarily named Hellfire Bay uh, for a little bit of beach inspo. And then next week, you guys are going to have uh, quite a fun episode. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil too much as to what's going to happen. But uh, we will be mooching towards the downtown space, of course. We're not too far away from that now. But either way, let's get started today with some vanilla housing fun, shall we? Okay, so on the entrance to Benezia, we've got some cute residential spaces here that I want to try and play with. And we're going to use some vanilla asset housing for this. And there's a couple of different ones I want to kind of run through. So I want to see if we can piece them together in various different fashions and styles to create basically mansions. Okay, of course we could go in the workshop and download some mansions ourselves. But with building spawn points and some creative use of move it here, I'm hoping that we can just position these houses in different orientations with maybe a little bit of leeway needed with some balcony clipping. But <laughs> I think we can get away with it for the most part. Uh, okay, so let's bring this one maybe like up to here, something like that. Okay. And then that gives us essentially sort of one giant larger property, right? Especially when you're sort of driving around it from the street level here. So I do like that. Of course, we want them all the same color. Um, I'm a fan of the burgundy, has to be said. Uh, so why don't we see if we can reset this one to be burgundy. And I guess these would also work with repaint as well, wouldn't they? So you could change the color totally if you wanted to to something a little bit more I guess bolder or brighter if you wanted to but I'll just go with the vanilla options for today's episode cool so we can go with that burgundy color I'm thinking we'll wrap it up with a fencing so let's pick something out we've got a couple of different fence networks here haven't we uh, I guess actually we could use the Avanya brick planters because these are some of our, some of my favorites as a bit of a garden wall it might be a little shallow. I think we can get away with it. So let's draw this in. We'll go for sensor just around the sides here, right? Let's make sure we have anarchy on as well. I don't know why I'm not playing with anarchy on. We'll just draw in a few stretches of it around the side. And then we'll use the curve tool just to uh, hook into these ones here. Hopefully without too much issue. Let's move this node back a little bit as well. So we're essentially going to get three low density residential houses within the same plot by doing this and it's actually quite a good way to use the vanilla assets just because we don't get to see them that often. I'm definitely thinking some concrete surface paint at the middle to essentially replicate something of a driveway. And we could even use those tiles that are on the property here as well if we wanted to. Let's also search for our brush here as well. Uh, not that though. Let's make sure we're actually searching and find it. There we go. I'm going to make sure custom assets is on as well, of course. And then let's just use that concrete brush to tidy up that surface painter clipping that we get. Have we look a little bit something like that. Okay. Now we do have uh, a selection of pools available as well from our uh, build in Sentinel quite a few episodes ago. So I'm thinking if we can just find a nice pool, something that will fill the space, maybe something like that. I think that's pretty cute, right? Let's go ahead and pick out some uh, rich people trees. What trees do rich people like? Figs? I think rich people eat figs, right? Although figs are nice, I do. I do enjoy a fig myself. I don't think they're particularly an elitist tree, are they? Gums as well, of course. We always love a gum tree. And then we can use some of those more uh, pool props that we've got here. You know, some of these little cabana things. Little cabana tents. Why don't we have one sort of sat underneath the tree here? And then we'll get this little tent one. Let's make sure that they can actually get into the tent though. <laughs> Otherwise they're just 
walking into that wall. Let's make sure we spin it around. But you can be creative with nature reserve props here as well. You know, give them a little uh, a little fire pit or something. You can have that there. Maybe a little little stool next to it. Maybe some choice bushes and colourful plants around here. We've got some of these. These are sort of the bush of the moment at the minute in Thessia around. We'll be using these quite a lot these days. I do enjoy these little little rose ones. A couple little of these colourful numbers at the bottom of the tree. And like we said, you know, we could dive into park life and explore nature reserve and uh, maybe even give them... There's a little shelter thing, isn't there? Lean-to shelter. Would that be out of the question here? Don't want it to be too big. You know, as long as we're positioned near the road and not losing that connection. You know, we can just create these really fun, cute little mini mansion complexes out of vanilla housing and some creative use of some props to help satisfy our residential demand rather than just having more zone suburbia out here. Okay. I think it's pretty convincing, isn't it? It's not the worst thing in the world, I don't think. Of course, there's a few different configurations of this. We'll do a few of these together before uh, we save the rest for our time lapse, of course, but this is the general process I'm thinking for some of our sort of Benezia mansions here. You know, the wine people all live in this sort of rich neighborhood of Benezia. Not bad, is it? I think it's all right. There is also one thing we need to do with these as well when we're doing such intense fusing is to make sure that we move their spawn points back onto the road. Otherwise, everyone in there is going to die. So, well, that'll be our first one. Let's go find another little plot now. But to be fair, these little um, roads here are actually dividing up into Quite perfect little little spots, aren't they? So why don't we keep doing this here? Let's push our green friend out to 16 meters as well. And this one up to 16 also. Cool, so we'll do another one here. Let's go ahead and pick up another uh, nicer looking residential asset. This one's a decent one. This one will probably work as well. Although the solar panels are a little bit noxious on that one, aren't they? Why don't we go for this one then? So with this one, why don't we do sort of two of these, although we definitely want to bob these though. Let's go ahead and do that and we'll remove those trees and can we replace this with uh, a nice palm? Uh, can we get the tall one? The royal palms are quite nice, aren't they? And then with this one we'll do traveller's palm tall. Is that going to be acceptable? Don't mind the little palm mix there at all. So let's grab these two and then we'll piece them back a little bit to find a sensible fusing point where it looks somewhat natural and realistic. How about somewhere about there? Okay, so let's do two of these. And I guess we could also, they've got the garages out here as well, haven't we? So that kind of helps us create a bit more of a driveway. But I bet we could also add into some of these, especially some of the very small European suburbia stuff almost as like a shed but of course it's a residential asset so it will function as such we've just got to remember to keep doing our spawn points here but that one should be okay anyway it's not too bad is it let's go ahead and get in that concrete brush again so I just think a much more fun and creative way of using some of our vanilla residential assets to create a bit more residential demand especially when we've got the mods and we can be creative like this as well so it's more interesting, isn't it? Cool, so that gives us another one. Let's go ahead now and throw in uh, some fence in. Would the suburban fence match the rich vibe? It's quite an Aussie fence, this one, isn't it? Yeah, I don't hate that, I don't think. So let's drag that from the side of the house. And of course, we've actually got some decent fence props as well, don't we? Especially some of the... The nicer walls here, especially with this sort of stuff. Let's try a little bit of this then. Let's go for a prop line tool fence fill with this fancy prop fence. So let's go from here. We'll bring it up to the corner of the house. Now these guys should also have a gate as well. Are you the gate? Yes, you are. Fabulous. Or is that the right gate though? It maybe doesn't look like it is. Yeah, this is the one we want here, isn't it? So we could piece those together. 
Let's go ahead and get that fence back on the uh, fence fill again. And we can drop that out of there. And then feed that into the house. So we can do network and prop fencing as well to bring these places to life a little bit. Don't know, I guess we can just mix and match, can't we? Choose whichever one we want. I notice he is suffering crime. We did move your spawn point though, so you should calm down eventually, I think. Okay, don't mind this. Let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, another pool. We'll get a fancy one this time, maybe. One here. We got some sun lounges out the side as well, maybe on this one. Maybe get two pools. No. One is enough. <laughs> Trying to overdo it. That's fine though. And again, we'll get that concrete brush right back again. Just tidy up any sort of weird concrete edging that appears from dragging assets around. We can make it a little bit sharper. I think it helps, doesn't it? Something like that. Uh, do we actually have a car prop here? Yeah, so we can even line up a little car outside of the garage if you get an asset with a garage on it. It's uh, it's very cool. A uh, counselling centre actually looks quite luxurious as well, doesn't it, from the university park? If I uh, get distracted for a second. Okay, don't mind that at all. Let's go ahead and flush this one out with a little bit of overgrowth in the corner. Around here, maybe some larger trees. A jacaranda, maybe. And maybe a taller date palm. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? So I think this is what we'll do to essentially fill these spaces, you know. We can just piece together varying different combinations of these larger houses with some choice pool props and nature reserve stuff goes really well with it as well, doesn't it? And then hopefully before we know it, we have a much more interesting uh, residential district around here, don't we? I think what I do want to do, now I'm sort of seeing it come together, is to actually upgrade the roads into tree-lined streets. So we'll have... All the ones that hold houses be tree lined. We did lose a little bit of uh, surface painter there, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'd lost a little bit of it, but we can always draw it back in a sec. Need to really turn off collision, don't I? Yeah, so we'll have all these houses be tree lined streets. Same through here again as well. Up this way, and then we'll save these just to be possibly grass lined as we move up this side. Something like that. Same with these ones here too. And then I think with the roads that cut through the neighbourhood, uh, let's have some of the median stuff. So we'll go for the grass median and almost use that as a boundary that separates the regular neighbourhood from the rich and luxurious one. We'll have that median run through the suburb there, I think. Then in terms of the tree we want on the road, obviously something fancy if we can uh, find it. I think we do actually have within our asset collection, we've got some uh, specific street trees. I think might go down quite well. Or we could take it palms. This is a little more, you no, know, it feels a little more sort of Los Angeles, this doesn't it, I guess. Palm line streets. But I'm sure there are palm line streets in a rich Australian suburb somewhere. I want to be careful of being too tree spicy here, but I think we should be okay. But the general concept is definitely there, isn't it? It's a really fun way of using our residential themes. So we'll do plenty more of this during our time lapse, right? We'll get some more houses in. Uh, now let's head over to the beach down this way and see what's gonna happen over here. So over here for a little while, essentially between Sentinel and Venezia, we've got this little beach over here that I definitely don't wanna leave untouched. And again, like we mentioned earlier, a big shout out to Bad Wolf in the Discord for giving us the inspiration from the very scarily named Hellfire Bay, uh, which is apparently riddled with sharks, so seems like a good place for a local's beach. So close from this overgrowth, and there's some really distinct vibes you can follow here. So we kind of got this cute little country national road here at the minute, aren't we? Which probably could actually do with a touch of multi-slope, couldn't it? Just so we're not quite as gnarly through here. Let's uh, connect our slopes. Let's go from here. And possibly bring it back just outside of Sentinel. There we go. That's a little bit nicer, isn't it? And then we will also just come through with a bit of Master Soften. Tidy up those edges. Cool. That's a little bit better, isn't it? 
So we we'll to use some parking roads for this. Let's go into our parking stuff. And we'll definitely grab poorly maintained while we're this far out. And let's bring it out onto this little peninsula. I wouldn't mind a little cafe out here. More like a... I guess a shack than a natural cafe is what I'm looking for. A nice wide node here as well as we come into this into the build. And then we'll do... Some little road network fun here. Just come out by six each. And then we'll have a circle coming off down here. And then we will grab some one-sided 16 meter poorly maintained i think we're pretty much replicating the car park that we see at hellfire bay here and we'll bring this straight the way down i think something like that should be good i also wouldn't even mind having a little bit of this parking mode function as car park as well i think uh, and then of course we'll get some uh, spots down here as well so we can see people uh, arrive at the beach so I think I'm keen for a little bit of layering here, a little bit of height. Let's see where our water is. Okay, so let's go for about here. So we're seeing again in our sort of street view, sat on this beach, that the back of the beach is pretty heavily overgrown. Uh, there's no parasols here, there's no sun lounges, there's no bloke selling pineapple. It's very much just uh, out of the way beach people go for a walk on. But uh, definitely not advised to be swimming here due to the Thessian wildlife. So we'll straighten that out a little bit. So we can also see some cute little cabins here. And I think, again, that the Nature Reserve stuff is going to come in uh, clutch for us. They actually got the Nature Reserve Museum, which we haven't used yet. Now, I don't mind that out here at all, you know. that's um That wasn't planned, but... Sort of works, doesn't it? Having the Nature Reserve Museum. I, th I think we might keep that in just for the time being. We'll see how that settles on. I actually did come in here for the hunting cabins, but yeah, we'll go with the museum as well while we're here. Yeah, and I think just a couple of cabins might even be worth her actually setting up a Nature Reserve gate. Can we get a tiny one? Don't really want the huge one. Um, yeah, okay. We'll go for this one then. Uh, we're going to name this after one of our Patreon subscribers as well today. And it's going to be Brian Pickle who gets this particular beach. I think in honour of that we're actually going to go for Pickle Sands. Which is a pretty cool name for a beach actually. So uh, thank you so much for all your support Brian Pickle. I really appreciate the patronship. Thank you very much indeed. And that will just push this out over the beach. Cool. And now we can be a little bit more flexible with exactly... Uh, where our cabins can sit because of course they have the path connection now down to the beach so we could do this here i'd love to have people walking on the beach so you can download invisible pathways if you want from the workshop and um, there's no reason why not they are uh, really good assets but you can also use a uh, regular dirt path then if you come into service painter and you choose this clip feature here you can actually remove the texture of the pathway, but obviously the pathway itself still remains, essentially turning it into an invisible path, all right? So I think we'll probably do the same with this one as well, actually. And then maybe just leave a little bit of the unpainted path just as we hit the sand. That's about where I want it to start coming in. Cool. And then we'll bring up some... Uh, more pathways up this side again. I'm not bothered about this being uh, a park that we charge people to get into. It's really just to help place our assets a little bit easier. So we'll have some of these cabins overlooking the beach. Yeah, I can't really tell what it looks like they're used for in Australia. Not entirely sure. And uh, we certainly want to bob these as well. They almost look like just bird watching cabins, I guess. Uh, let's definitely get rid of those palms. Let's maybe switch them out for the Lala. We don't really use this tree that often, do we? There we go. Palm for Lala, please. There we go. And then we'll do this one as well. Let's change this one out for banana trees. Why not? That seems like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Have some banana trees out here. Cool. Okay, so hopefully these assets will start drawing some people over. And then if we can get some more on the other side as well, then hopefully that's going to encourage people to actually walk across the beach, which would be uh, tremendous. 
There's also as well on the bays around uh, Hellfire in this particular part of Australia. I think we're actually in a nature reserve here itself. But um, there are little campgrounds as well, so I'm definitely not averse to having a couple of little tents knocking around. Maybe have these up here. And I actually sort of need to <laughs> be able to see my pathway first, actually, before we do this. So let's repaint that path back in. And then let's use this pathway here to create a few little loops. Nothing overly designed, no real infrastructure out here. It's various different shapes and sizes. Let's give ourselves a forest brush as well so we can see what we're doing. Yep, stuff like this is perfect. Oh, I did ruin my little curve there though. See if we can correct that. Yeah, so this is cool. This is exactly what I'm after. And it's placing a number of tents. Because tents really do actually draw the crowds in cities. Like they just live for them. Uh, various different ones. Little campsites and lean twos out here again would be uh, fabulous, I think, for sitting and enjoying the beach. Although we have to be aware of uh, terrain conforming assets. So let's bring. This one over here a little bit so we don't get the cliff towering. See the whole thing here actually needs a bit of softening, doesn't it? There we go. And we probably will also extend this sand texture up a little bit as well, I imagine. Um, sort of push it up a little bit further up. I guess we could actually call this Pickle Bay, shouldn't we? If we're taking inspiration from Hellfire Bay. Yeah, a little, little bit more sand here is what I want. Use um, extra landscaping tools to achieve this, by the way, if you don't know. Where are you going? He's going to the Nature Reserve Museum. Wonderful news. Let's uh, follow along. Cute little brooch, isn't it? That uh, Nature Reserve Museum definitely isn't too intrusive, I don't think. Hopefully he's going to park on one of our spaces. Come on, Graham. Don't let me down now. Yes. Fantastic news. There we go. Awesome. Perfect little jeep parked on the beach. Very thematic, isn't it? <laughs> really, really cool. Love that. Perfect vehicle choice for that one as well. And they're actually close enough just to walk straight from the car park up to those as well. So happy with that. Very nice. Uh, but yes, we will see people uh, come down here now. Of course, we we have a uh, sim attracting assets. I'll tell you, I wouldn't mind as well. A little bit of uh, that dirt road that we've been using recently. The one that has sort of the wet texture on it. I almost used this as a little bit of a uh, access point onto the campground as well, just next to the beach. So that might actually end up taking a bit of traffic off of the beach pathway, which I don't really want to happen because I want to see people walking on that. So if that's the case, we might end up removing that road. We'll have to wait and see how they behave. But either way, let's uh, unsurface paint all that texture off of the sand really want it here so basically just start on the grass and then we'll blend that in with a lot of the overgrowth and sort of foliage that we're seeing around the beach here and what we are actually seeing in australia is a set of stairs and we know what that means don't we so let's come into our propolis pathways oh yes they're walking on the beach we're cycling on it i guess very nice mate where are you going and here we go, Piper is cycling down the beach. Cycling over Pickle Sands, amazing news. <laughs> Love that. That must be absolutely murder on her calves. Cycling through sand. Cardio of a different level that, isn't it? Uh, let's come over here, back to our propless pathways. Yeah, so we can certainly see um, some stairs here leading down toward the beach uh, to uh, what looks like a group of bogans sat near a canoe. So I think we'll go with that. Uh, let's use our IMT to grab that stair pattern again. And then we'll be able to have some stairs. And it's essentially just super thick overgrowth um, all around the beach away from this. And uh, let me just move it here to grab some of these nodes. I think we might actually end up upgrading this particular pathway into nature reserve just so it does conform with the terrain. I think that's probably a little bit better. Uh, there's also, I can see a canoe as well down here. So more nature reserve props. Absolutely perfect for these little beach builds here. 
And we can also see some rocks over in the corner as well. So let's go ahead and get those. Let's place in some larger numbers near the water. And then we'll see if we can sort of filter down and around. Make a little bit more of a slightly realistic outcrop if we can. Mark a couple of those. Uh, lots of pretty shaggy overgrowth around that as well, I think. Quite thick. Super dense here. And we've also got loads of overgrowth against the back of the sands as well. That essentially separates it from uh, the grassland and the beach. So we'll do various points here. And we've also got some uh, little uh, shrub clusters as well from the workshop that I think will go quite a long way for achieving this sort of overgrown, wild, non-touristic beach vibe. Plenty of this up alongside the... Uh, pathway to where people are coming down. Let's make sure we carry on those patterns. Uh, is there a larger one than this? We can probably get this one in, can't we? Yeah, lots of that. This sort of stuff. And then I think a bit of content creator wild grass or long grass, actually. That uh, would be a nice little accompaniment there as well to that. Fantastic. And a couple of those little nature reserve seats as well. A couple of these. There's a bloke fishing on the beach here as well. In that wildfire bay. A couple of those. Maybe a little campsite table. A little restroom maybe. Outhouse over here. Something like that. And this should hopefully give us the effect of a sort of locals beach that tourists don't really come here. Like they hear the shark stories. Another kid walking across here in his pink hoodie holding his teddy bear. What's this guy's name? Edward Blackwell. What is that over in the distance? Oh, it's my outside connection marker. <laughs> what the hell is that? I didn't place anything over there. Cool, okay. But we get the thought process with the locals beach, I think. Super overgrown. Uh, and of course, lots of inspiration to take from also. Big thanks to Bad Wolf for that inspiration of Wildfire Bay. Uh, super inspiring for beach projects like this. But so uh, that'd be the project. We can carry on that overgrowth around the edge of it. And uh, it doesn't look like this road is siphoning too much traffic away from our tents either. Otherwise, guys, this does feel like a fun place for a detailing time lapse. Going to wrap up the beach here. Lots more prop detailing to do. Uh, get this thick overgrowth all and around to make it look a little bit more natural. Service painter, all little ideas around here. And also, of course, continue to add in uh, some more vanilla asset mansions. Uh, have a lot of fun with these, I think, I hope today. And then uh, we'll see what looks like will come the end. But a lot of fun, kind of a random episode. And uh, very two sort of different projects today. And, uh, really looking forward to showing you guys what's happening next week as well. But uh, of course you'll have to wait and see for that. But otherwise, let's do some detailing. And then we'll be right back.
it in review, shall we? So we'll start with some new high density additions on the edge of town. Uh, just some pretty simple green cities fusing with some tennis courts and trees. Yeah, so just different green cities asset. Just want a bit more height uh, in the town along the main street to match some of our condos over here we did last episode as well. Now just a little note. Train station, insanely busy. Of course, taking people back into to Valkyrie and Sentinel. Uh, super, super satisfying to watch. Imagine we'll see a train come in here. Look at that. <laughs> so good. Such a busy little train station in Benezi now, isn't it? That town has really come alive. Look at all those people. Amazing. So good. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the residential. So all of our mega mansions have been surrounded with mid-century modern houses just to reinforce that luxury vibe. Lots of pools and palms, uh, different bits of detail in here. Got car props in, different types of fencing around them. A really nice fusing, just an absolute ton of fun to find vanilla assets that will essentially bend to this theme. I really enjoyed doing this. Possibly one of my new favourite things to do in City Skylines is now vanilla housing mansion fusing. <laughs> really, really great fun. I super enjoyed it. I also got some Hearts of Korea ones in here as well. These are really luxury nice properties, aren't they? So these worked really nicely for it. And then we did have some luxury houses off the workshop as well. So I thought we'd do a little workshop fusing for some really luxurious properties right in Benezia. I think pretty much everyone now would probably live in the mansion districts of uh, Benezia, right? Let me know where you would now live in Thessia. I think everyone's going to come here, right? <laughs> Super. Really nice neighbourhood. Uh, finished off with some part detailing, of course, and a thunderbox uh, knocking about over here as well. Uh, and then that's it. We've just got the forest that wraps back around it now. And that uh, town of Benezia is pretty much done. Uh, really nice town. Not nearly as big as Sentinel, but that's definitely the vibe we wanted to install here. Just a nice chill town with a little bit of money behind it. And of course the uh, vineyards up on the hills over there as well. Always appreciated. And uh, then we will head down towards the beach where we have our campground, which again, referencing our Google Earth around Hellfire Bay. There's no proper infrastructure here. It's tents and dirt and sand. And trees and rocks and love the way the overgrowth came out uh, really nicely overgrown beach uh, that people are walking on <laughs> which is super cool uh, love to see that and there's just something so satisfying isn't there about sort of overgrown rocks and shrubbery and long grass against the beachfront that's just really nice to look at uh, and we do have some sharks out in the bay as well of course with it being at uh, this particular area of that's yeah thought it'd be Appropriate to have some more sharks out here. So don't go swimming in Pickle Bay. It's not safe. And then we come down to some more of those props that again we're referencing on Google Earth. For the steps take us back up to the car park and the museum with some more of those cabins out here. And plenty of parking and roundabout detailing over this side. I really like the way it turned out and it's getting some decent use as well. And there is a fair few people deciding to come over here. Using the stairs as well, please. Thank you. <laughs> so good. Love the stairs, everyone. Any excuse to use the stairs, and I am all over it. But uh, it came out really nice. Two really distinct projects today. Um, a quiet, sort of lesser known, more overgrown locals beach. And that's some very rich, luxurious housing uh, to house the rich and powerful of Benezia. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Big thanks again to Bad Wolf and everyone else that drops inspiration and ideas in the Discord and the comments for Australian themed builds. It really helps lead to things like this. And I hope you've enjoyed the two uh, pretty polar opposite projects today. It's been a nice expansion to the general Benezian area alongside a little bit of Sentinel here as well today with this beach. Like I said, next week will be a little bit of a different episode. Uh, it's very exciting, so please keep your eyes peeled uh, on Twitter and the Discord for that. Of course, it will be out next Friday, hopefully, with everything going well. But, of course, I'll get you updated. So please enjoy your cinematics, but I'll shut up and leave it there. And I just thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.